Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to a review of a brand new Hornby tank engine. So today I'm super excited because it must be literally 10 minutes ago since the postman came to the door with a parcel and I knew what was inside the parcel because I've been following the tracking number quite fiercely over the last day or two. So the model is this, it is the brand new Hornby Terrier, brand new tooled and only just released. And as you can see here, the first version to be released is the BR Black version. Now I found this a little bit odd, I wasn't expecting the BR Black version to be the first out. Now obviously it is quite a simple livery, at least compared to some of the others, so it makes sense that this one would have been first from the factory. But as far as I understood it, I thought this product was all about the impact. And so yes, I would have expected one of the other liveries to deliver more of an impact than this. However, it won't be too long until we're seeing those other liveries, and at least this one's here, so we're going to get this out and take a look. So let's hope this is really, really good. I've heard a lot about it. Some say it's going to be great, some say it's not. Let's find out today which is true. Let's take a look at the brand new Hornby Terrier. So yes, here we are, literally a couple of months since this was announced and it's already with the retailers, so that has to be some sort of record. So the RRP for this is, I believe, £89.99 from Hornby. However, if you want to get it a little bit cheaper, Hattons have these on sale for, well, they're not on sale, they're just for sale for £81, which can't be bad, can it, for a brand new tooled model. And by the way, if you fancy picking this or any other Terrier up, I will include a link in the description so that you can get those there. But for now then, let's have my, well, it's going to be my first ever a look at this thing so I really can't wait. First of all then here's a quick look at the end of the box so the product number for this is R3768 it is in the late BR livery of course with the late BR crest it is an A1 slash A1X class terrier and the running number at the bottom there is 32636 and this is DCC ready as you might expect and that is of note because of course the previous Hornby terriers were not DCC ready and this one is so that is pretty cool. Okay let me just show you the back of the box then <laughs> zero P I've just seen Blimey, I didn't realise these were classified as a 0p by the BR. Crikey, that sounds a bit harsh. Couldn't they have afforded to give it a 1? Crikey, well, I didn't realise that. And then, of course, on the other side, we have a bit of history there, or quite a lot of history, in fact, on the Terriers there. So if you want to pause and read that, absolutely feel free to. But, as you can probably tell, I'm quite eager to get into this and find out once and for all what it is like. So let's get this out of sleeve off and take a first look. Man, that's tight. If I can, I might not be able to. Oh, I've managed it, I've managed it. Ah, there it is. Now, I've got a Terrier. I've got an old Hornby Terrier, but uh, it's easy to forget just how tiny these are. Unless, of course, the original Terrier was a little overscale and this one's correct. But, uh, yeah, it looks pretty tiny to me, doesn't it? Right, well, let's get this out, if I can. Man, I'm struggling with this today. <laughs> is it excitement or is it just uh, particularly well packaged? I don't know. Okay, so there's the loco. There is a bit of paperwork in the box, so I'll pull that out and we'll just take a quick look. So this is the operating and maintenance instructions for the A1 slash A1X Terrier. Let's have a quick look inside, shall we? All right, so it's your standard diagram, really. It just shows you a bit about the lubrication, body removal. Let's see here, fitting accessories, that's pretty good. And DCC ready slash sound. And I guess you can see there how to fit the decoder, if that's something you want to do. Although I should say that Hornby are producing uh, DCC fitted versions of these Terrier models, uh, which is not something that they've always done over recent years with their models, but they certainly certainly are with these, so I think that's quite interesting. Okay, so let's go then, let's take the sleeve off and take a look at the accessories, or the detail bag, which is just here, and uh, oh, I'm quite glad to see there's not really an awful lot you have to fit there, there's just a little bit of pipe work it looks like, and that is it, I can't see, yeah, no, that's it, so that's pretty cool, because as you know, I like to sort of leave my detail bags as they are, I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for keeping things in original condition, which I know is a bit odd, but uh, either way, that's what I do, so let's get this out and take a look I can't wait for this oh nice whoa okay so this thing is heavy it's very very tiny and I will have to put it next to my other terrier uh, later on 
uh, to find out whether or not it is smaller, but it looks absolutely tiny. It really, really does. So there it is, the brand new Hornby Terrier. It looks really, it looks really lovely, doesn't it? I, again, to say this is one of the simpler liveries, and one of the liveries that everybody's used to, it still looks beautiful, doesn't it? It really does. So here's a little bit of history on the Terriers then, and as soon as I've gotten through all of that, we will take a nice close look at this and find out what this thing is really like. Okay, let's do it. So, also known as the LB and SCR Class A1, the Terriers were a class of small passenger locomotives first introduced in 1872 to the design of William Stroudley. The distinctive barking sound produced by the exhaust beat gave them their affectionate nicknames. Now, even though the Terriers were getting a little bit out of date, really, by the time the grouping of 1923 occurred, the class did remain in service under the Southern Railway, and indeed many Terriers even survived well into the final years of steam, with the final withdrawal not taking place until 1964 so that is pretty late for a loco that was first introduced in the 1870s it's pretty crazy really now this example number 32636 was one of the first ones built back in september 1872 and it originally carried the name fenchurch and it had the number 72 now this is a preserved example and it now resides on the bluebell railway so of 50 produced in total a healthy 10 terriers remain in preservation while sadly the remainder were scrapped so there it is then, the very lovely brand new Hornby Terrier up against the white background. And yeah, I must say, just looking at it like this, it looks like a really beautiful model. And I think for the RRP of £89.99, or even the uh, retailer's price of £81, this can't be bad value, can it? It really can't. However, now that I've had quite a close look at this, I must say that some of the cheapness of this model is starting to show through a little bit. And I would go as far as to say, in places, the model does look a tiny bit crude. Possibly or possibly not because of how cheaply these things have been produced. So here's what I mean. As you can see, if we look at the top, despite the massive amount of detail there, which we'll come back to, you can see there are visible glue marks on some of that pipework, which is a little bit unfortunate. And as you can see along the line where the tanks join the boiler, you can see there is a little bit of uh, a gluey mess there, uh, which is visible if you look closely. And also you can see that this handrail here on the, well, on our side has not been fitted properly. You can see the support there hasn't gone into the hole. Uh, so, you know, that's relatively minor, but if we look underneath, let me show you this. Now, just look at that front pickup there. Now, that is bent right over. And I would say that if I took that onto my track right now and tried to run it, that would cause some damage. So I would say that these have been assembled quite sloppily. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that they're crude in terms of accuracy, because obviously I'm not really qualified to say so. I don't have an awful lot of knowledge of these prototypes. Although I must say that having looked up a photo of the prototype in real life and compared them on a very, very basic level, it does seem that the various components and their proportions are roughly correct to the untrained eye. So I, I will say that. Uh, but yeah, it is a little bit of a shame that uh, it hasn't been assembled to the, to the highest standards. However, it isn't all bad news. There are quite a few nice features on this. First and foremost, the very heavy die-cast metal running board on the Loco there, which does give it a lot of its weight. And in fact, I did say that this looked a little bit smaller than the old Hornby Terrier that I've got, and it is in fact. It is a little bit smaller. As you can see, even if I put this old Terrier on the, uh, on the ground and not on the track, you can see that they're about the same height there. So the new Terrier is a little bit shorter. But despite that, it's still heavier than the old Hornby Terrier. The old Hornby Terrier weighed in at about 100 grams this weighs 110 so it is a little bit heavier despite being a little bit smaller and no doubt that die cast metal running board there is the reason behind that also the paintwork has really been done to a high standard you can see we've got the late British Railways crest there which is very very nicely applied and you've got a plethora of different lining all over the model really especially on the splashes there as you can see and of course on the bottom of the coal bunker near the cab where you've got the the zero P classification and the running number which are very nicely applied it must be said there's also quite a few separately fitted parts on the model, as you can probably expect, and I noticed those as soon as I opened the box, because as you can see, looking down on it, there's an awful lot to see there in terms of pipe work, and most of that is much more complex than it was on the original Hornby Terrier, which is a major, major improvement. I will say, though, that as you can see, the whistle and uh, other sort of copper-coloured pipework on the model is clearly just made of plastic. Uh, I don't think that's a massive complaint, really, because I think the, the price of the model reflects that, and it isn't too expensive to buy. 
so it's fine that some costs have been cut there but I think it's worth pointing that out and the same thing goes for the buffers although they do look as though they're made of metal and uh, they do look reasonably realistic those are not sprung or anything like that now if this had cost over 100 pounds for example I would probably complain about that and say oh it's bad value but I think in this case the savings there have been passed on to the customer because a price of 89 pounds or less uh, is quite reasonable I think for this so I don't think that's a criticism I don't mind seeing a model without sprung buffers as long as it didn't cost the earth in the first place and this one certainly doesn't so if we take a look at the side of the boiler you can see we do have this separately fitted it appears to be separately fitted copper device on there which uh, contrasts massively to the original Hornby Terrier <laughs> where that was sort of molded on and extruded out quite a long way and uh, so yeah it was quite a breath of fresh air to see that and there are a few other separately fitted parts on the side of the model as well including this what looks like some sort of tap or something I'm not absolutely sure what that is uh, again you'll have to excuse my ignorance there and an area that is really quite impressive is the smoke box door of course which has got uh, an awful lot of finely scaled detail on there including a separately fitted smoke box dot which is absolutely tiny by the way I suppose you can get a sense of the scale there just by looking at my finger and you've also got the finely applied running number and shed code on there as well as a very very tiny uh, handrail the clearance between that handrail and the smoke box door is absolutely tiny so that really is quite a nice refined detail there and if we take a little look further forward you can see the running board here does have the uh, traditional uh, LBSC lamp irons on them which are nice and tall and it's quite interesting to see that those were not lost uh, as the uh, BR days approached and whatnot and as we've already talked about there's the buffer beam which is relatively simple I think as per the prototype and uh, as you can also see you've got the vacuum pipe and the coupling hook there pre-fitted as well as a pre-fitted NEM coupling as well on the front uh, which is quite nice to see. Now let's take a quick look at the cab then if we take a look inside you can see there is quite a lot of painted cab detail there which does contrast massively with the old Hornby Terrier and it is amazing to be actually seeing a Terrier with a fully detailed cab but I would probably style this a mid-range cab in inverted commas because as you can see there is no paintwork on the gauges and such however once again for such a low cost it's amazing just to see some painted cab detail inside there which I think is quite good so as a budget model this is starting to shape up very very nicely and yes as you can see we do have the separately fitted uh, glazing in the windows there which is pretty good although looking inside the cab it doesn't look quite as good because you can see the transparent plastic hasn't been covered up there uh, it's quite a simple way of fitting windows really quite a safe way of fitting windows obviously because it's difficult to get them in the wrong position like that but for from the inside it does look a little bit unrealistic but that's just something to bear in mind now the coal load in the back looks pretty good to me it is quite fine scale uh, I'm not 100% sure whether it's removable it doesn't look like it is but it might well be uh, but obviously that's a consideration for those who don't like plastic coal and they prefer to put their own in I must say I'm not absolutely sure and until I've done the review I don't fancy uh, prodding around with that and possibly damaging it but uh, yeah so at this point I don't know whether that's removable or not if you've got one of these and you've tried to remove it though do let me know down in the comments Okay, so I think that's a good overview of the detail. Uh, clearly, there is quite a lot going on in terms of separately fitted parts, and certainly the paintwork is done to a very high standard, and I can only imagine what some of the other versions of this are going to look like, once again for the same price. So let's get this down onto the track then. I will have to make some repairs to the pickups first, because as I say, I don't fancy running it in that state. I don't like to modify a loco before I try it on the track, but I think in this case I'll make an exception just to avoid destroying it. Okay, so there she is then, the brand new Terrier, down onto the track, ready for its first ever run. And yes, I've not tried this one yet. So what I have done is I've taken it onto the bench and I've straightened out that dodgy pickup and I've made sure that it's making a good contact with the wheel. There were other pickups which were a little bit borderline, but I've decided only to adjust that one that was very obviously uh, completely messed up. Uh, so I will have to keep a close eye on this once it's running in, uh, just to make sure that those pickups aren't going to foul the thing up. But yeah, generally I really, really don't like to have to make repairs to a loco when it's brand new straight out of the box. Obviously not because I'm unable or because I can't be bothered, but because when you're paying £80 for something, or more sometimes, it really ought to be right, didn't it? It's not right to expect people to have to make repairs straight out of the box. But like I say, I've done so today just so that it doesn't damage itself. But with pickups, it is very, very dodgy because, of course, if I hadn't noticed that and I'd tried it, it could have run foul and damaged the pickup permanently, or it could have, even worse, jammed the whole mechanism up and possibly even burned the motor out. So, yeah, it 
is basic stuff and it's a shame that that wasn't right with my version. But again, if you're going to buy one of these, do let me know in the comments uh, what yours is like in that area. And of course, do double check before you run them. I think that's the advice. Okay, so let's talk about the mechanism then. Now, I've not had this apart, obviously, yet. I've only straightened that pickup and that's all I've done. But I have read online that these are sporting a three-pole motor inside, which isn't that great. Obviously, we do prefer five-pole motors. But once again, this is quite an inexpensive model. So I think the cost does reflect that. And also, we have seen Locos with three-pole motors that do run very, very well. So we'll have to see how that goes. Also, there is a proper set of bearings on the wheel set. And of course, you'd expect no less from Hornby. They tend to do that invariably. Okay, so I'm quite excited about this. Let's give it its first ever run. I have no idea how this is going to perform. So let's find out. So it's on the HM2000, not DCC fitted or anything. So this is just DC. Let's see how it goes. I'm turning it up right now. And it's creeping backwards. And I've got to say, that does look pretty slow, doesn't it? It uh, has cut out. <laughs> I should never praise a loco until it's uh, proved itself. Try it forwards. I should say, though, this hasn't run in yet, so it might improve. Well, it should improve as time goes on. But that ain't too bad, generally speaking. That isn't too bad at all. I don't know whether the pickups are going to be a problem. You know, if the others that were a bit borderline are making bad contact, that could be why it cut out, but it hasn't done it since, has it? Ooh, it's nice and smooth <laughs> and quiet. Generally, I think that's going to be a good runner. It looked, from the diagrams I've seen and from the photos I've seen, it looks like the same motor that was in the Pecket. And I've come across those quite a lot. Uh, and they are good motors, especially the ones that have proper brushes in them and whatnot. Right, let's try it on the express points. Oh, it has stopped. Let's show you. Yeah, it has stopped and it's actually only the centre wheel that's on the dead zone yet. Uh, so yeah, the wheel the wheel base is larger than the dead zone of the express point. So there's no reason really why that should be stopping there. But once again, I think pickups are a bit of an issue with this. It has been sloppily assembled where the pickups are concerned. But let's try and, there we are. Let's give it a benefit of the doubt though. Let's go back over it and see if it'll do it. Oh, yep, it's managed it that time. So yeah, not too bad, the performance seems promising. Obviously it hasn't been running yet, so it's unfair to pass a conclusive judgment on it right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it forwards and we'll leave this running at about half speed and we will see what it's like in 45 minutes or so. So let's do that. So at half speed, as you can see, it is good and smooth and quiet, but it's also a little bit speedy. And normally I would suggest that that's an issue with the gear ratios. However, at the very slowest speed, it did seem capable of doing a good crawl. So it must be a very, very good motor inside that one. But yeah, that is just an observation. It does seem to run quite fast. But it really does look the part, doesn't it? If you don't look too close at the glue marks, <laughs> it is quite a gorgeous looking model, I must say. I, I do love this one. Okay, there we go. So she's had a good 20 to 25 minutes running in in each direction now. And generally speaking, the performance does seem to be much the same, pretty good still. I have noticed though, that on certain uh, curves, not points, at the slower speed, she does still cut out occasionally, which again does suggest there might be an issue with the pickups there. So I do hope that's not gonna be a massive problem with this. But either way, let's try that slow speed crawl again and just see how that is, see if it's improved at all. Yeah, it does seem to lurch forwards a little bit, so. Yeah, maybe there is a bit of an issue with the uh, the gearing there. Perhaps the gear ratios could be tweaked a bit. But either way, that's not too bad. It's not dreadfully smooth at those slow speeds, but as you can see, it is moving forwards nice and slowly there. And certainly once you get a little bit quicker on the controller, that is perfectly smooth, isn't it, really? Let's just try it on the express points then. Excuse me while I just move you around. Oh, I thought she was going to stop, but she hasn't. Yeah, we seem to be good on there, so that's better. So yeah, it's just curves, which obviously means that pickups on one side of the model uh, get pulled away from the wheels, of course, when they go around curves. Uh, so yeah, dodgy, dodgy pickups. But uh, either way, performance, not too bad. Okay, so I have set up four Southern coaches, as you can see, just on the line a little bit further back, and she's gonna couple up to those and we'll see how she hauls them. Now, they are good modern coaches uh, with uh, modern wheels and modern couplings and that, so they should be relatively free from drag and that sort of thing. So I'm hoping that as a reasonably heavy model, she ought to manage them. So uh, let's try that out now and uh, go couple to them. 
Yes, it, it does run very similar to the Pekits actually. It's very smooth and quiet. Uh, though I must say, even the Pekits were a little bit more reliable on curves and things. I don't think my Pekit ever really cut out. Um, but uh, you know, this is still quite new. It might improve even further as things go on. So anyway, let's see if we can get her to haul these Southern coaches. Looks like she will. We'll try her on Gordon's Hill. That's the ultimate test. But for the time being, she's uh, hauling those just fine and she does look absolutely lovely with them. All right, so also running alongside this terrier, we have yet another terrier. This is the older Hornby slash Dapple Terrier. And it is, I must say, um, the improvements on the new Hornby Terrier are huge in comparison to this. And just looking at this one does demonstrate just how badly an update was needed, uh, even down to the sizings. This is quite a lot taller than the new Hornby Terrier, which just shows, uh, well, I suppose, I would hope the new version would be accurate. I think that's what it I think that's what the situation would be. But uh, interesting nonetheless, isn't it? So there we go, that's the old Terrier Whitechapel, that one is. And then on the very inside line, I've got yet another LBSC locomotive, another tank engine in fact. It is the E4 with a nice Pullman train. So there we go, another good run of that one. So for the time being then, let's take a look at the new Hornby Terrier and see how it's getting on with a bit of a load. Uh, hopefully it will be getting on just fine. Hopefully. Ah, here she comes. I must say, she does look absolutely lovely, doesn't she? I'm a little bit annoyed that I had to make critical repairs straight out of the box. But overall, I think for the money I paid, I got a good deal, didn't I? And just look at how she's managing those coaches. Can't see any wheel slip, can't see any problems. That looks absolutely fine. Hmm, maybe there was a bit of slip there, actually. But she certainly hasn't stopped. So she's managing realistic loads. I don't really know what they'd be able to pull in real life, but I wouldn't have thought it would be massively more than four coaches. The only problem is though, I've gone and bought the BR Black one because I wanted to review it with the, well, as soon as they were released, but it has made me desperate to know what the other liveries are gonna look like. So maybe these Terriers are going to cost me quite a bit this year. We might be talking a lot more than just £81. But we will see. We will see. But uh, yes, let me know down below. Should I try some of the others? I would be tempted. All right, so here are some of my ratings then for the brand new Hornby Terrier. So detail, I've given this four stars. Overall, the detail for the most part is very impressive, particularly with the pipe work. However, the cab does leave a little bit to be desired. We have seen better cabs than that. And of course, there's a little bit too much plastic for my liking, especially where the whistles are concerned and other such parts. But either way, pretty good on the detail. The performance is also very, very good. It runs smoothly and very, very quietly, and it seems to have a good degree of power as well. It does seem to run a little bit fast though, which may or may not affect the torque, although it doesn't seem to have done for this model. My only real criticism with the performance on this is that it does occasionally stop on curves and things, uh, even now, even after it's been run in. And I suspect it's probably the pickups that are causing that problem. But either way, not a bad performance. The mechanism also seems to be pretty good. It, it seems all right to me. It has got a three pole motor, which is why I've knocked it down one star. However, that three pole motor doesn't seem to affect the performance negatively. So yeah, generally the performance and the mechanism are okay. The quality though is where I had the issues because obviously glue marks is a little bit of an issue. Certainly sloppy assembly, especially where pickups are concerned is a bit of an issue. And again, a little bit too much plastic does knock the quality down quite severely with this. And when you see these things straight out of the box, it does ruin your first impressions a little bit. So I've given it a two, two and a half star actually on uh, the quality there and I think that's justified. Uh, we have seen better from Hornby. It does almost look as though this has been rushed which is very very interesting considering the situation with this model. Value though I must say for £81 that's what I paid for this from Hattons. This is a very good value model. Yes it does have a few issues but if this cost you know £100 or more imagine how much more annoying those issues would be. And I'm not saying that the small downfalls of this model are okay it's just that because it didn't cost so much they're not a massive massive detraction. So overall then that is 7.9 out of 10 not too bad let's put it into the ranking there we go sixth just above the oxford janus and below the mahano 440 yep yeah, overall not too bad i think i was expecting a little bit better it's certainly where the build quality was concerned but overall it's a decent little runner
I'm loving these new Southern coaches, by the way. Definitely one of my favourite purchases of the recent times. Love them. All right then, folks. Well, that will just about do it for today's review. I do hope you enjoyed seeing this. It's always exciting, isn't it, uh, getting your hands on some new models. So let me know down in the comments what you thought about this one. Will you be getting one? Will you not? Let me know what you'll be doing and also let me know why. But for the time being, folks, once again, thank you for your company and I will see you all very, very soon. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care of yourselves.